Welcome to you all this morning, um, on this quite chilly morning. Um, it is the 18th Sunday after Trinity that we're celebrating today. It's also the Feast of St Michael and All Angels, but we're concentrating on Trinity 18. It's lovely to be here. Just a couple of notices. It is food bank today, um, so I'm sure Ben will take any gifts that you would want to give. Um, next week is Harvest, followed by Harvest Lunch in the parish rooms. Exactly. So there we are. Don't forget. <laughs> <laughs> so let's just take a moment as we're meeting in God's name and feel intentionally God's presence through the Holy Spirit today. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Let's sing our opening hymn, which is number 235. Glorious things. Sorry, sorry. 253. I put it the wrong way around. First mistake. For the beauty of the earth. Lord your God with all your heart, 
with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Amen. Lord have mercy. My brothers and sisters, as we prepare to celebrate the presence of Christ in word and sacrament, let us call to mind our sins in silence. And let us confess that, in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we, Father, we have, have sinned against you and against our neighbour, in, in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant us that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We are assured of God's forgiveness. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Knowing we are forgiven, we stand to sing the Gloria in Excelsis. <laughs> The Old Testament reading is from the book of Numbers, chapter 11, beginning at verse 4. The rabble among them had a strong craving, and the Israelites also wept again and said, If only we had meat to eat. We remember the fish we used to eat in Egypt for nothing. The cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, and the garlic. But now our strength is dried up, 
And there is nothing at all but this manna to look at. Moses heard the people weeping throughout their families, all at the entrances of their tents. Then the Lord became very angry, and Moses was displeased. So Moses said to the Lord, Why have you treated your servant so badly? Why have I not found favour in your sight, that you lay the burden of all this people on me? Did I conceive all this people? Did I give birth to them, that you should say to me, carry them in your bosom as a nurse carries a suffering child, to the land that you promised on oath to their ancestors? Where am I to get meat to give to all this people? For they come weeping to me and say, give us meat to eat. I am not able to carry all these people alone, but they are too heavy for me. If this is the way you are going to treat me, put me to death at once. I have found favour in your sight, and do not let me see my misery. So the Lord said to Moses, Gather for me seventy of the elders of Israel, whom you know to be the elders of the people and officers over them. Bring them to the tent of meeting, and have them take their place there with you. So Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord, and he gathered seventy elders of the people and placed them all around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to them, and took some of the spirit that was on him and put it on the seventy elders. And when the Spirit rested upon them, they prophesied, but they did not do so again. Two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad and the other named Medad, and the Spirit rested on them. They were among those registered, but they had not gone out to the tent, and so they prophesied in the camp. And a young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad, a prophesied in the camp. And Joshua, son of Nun, the assistant of Moses, one of his chosen men, said, My Lord Moses, stop them. But Moses said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his spirit on all of them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is taken from the Epistle of James, chapter 3. Chapter 5. Are any among you suffering? They should pray. Are any cheerful? they should sing songs of praise. Are any among you sick? They should call for the elders of the church and have them pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise them up, and anyone who has committed sins will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another, and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being like us, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain. And for three years and six months, it did not rain on the earth. Then he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth yielded its harvest. 
My brothers and sisters, if anyone amongst you wanders from the truth and is brought back by another, you should know that whoever brings back a sinner from wandering will save the sinner's soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. because you bear the name of Christ, will by no means lose the reward. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for you if a great millstone 
were hung around your neck, and you were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than to have two hands and to go to hell, to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than to have two feet and to be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than have two eyes and be thrown into hell. Where their worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if salt has lost its saltiness, how can you season it? You have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Please do be seated. <laughs> Father, give us faith to receive your word, understanding to know what it means, and the will to put it into practice. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. <coughs> I find it sometimes useful to put the gospel reading for a particular Sunday into context by reminding myself of the whole gospel, a chapter, the reading for the day, and then the individual sentences. A bit like using Google Earth to zoom in and out of places, allowing us to see different amount of detail, depending on the magnification you use. The whole of Mark's Gospel is like looking at a map of the UK. We can't make out individual places, but we can see the general shape of the land, and so we can pick out the indent that's more conveyed. In our Gospel readings for the last three Sundays, we can see that we're in a section where Jesus three times predicts his death and resurrection, each time following the prediction with how we are to live as disciples. If we zoom in further, we can see villages. Last week's Gospel picked up on the second time that Jesus predicted his death, his teaching about discipleship, in which we were reminded of the close connection between Jesus' sacrifice for us and the sacrifices that we're called to make. The first should be last and the last should be first, calling us to achieve greatness by becoming servants of all. Zooming further, picking up more detail, able to pick out some of the beauty of the earth, and we come to today's Gospel reading. It's a difficult and challenging text. At first the sentences appear disjointed, or at least they did to me. On closer inspection, we can see that they all, they all relate to how we live kingdom-centred lives and work towards the goal of eternal life in God's kingdom, which we call heaven. The disciples begin by telling Jesus of an exorcist whose ministry they've tried to put a stop to. In the disciples' eyes, they stop someone whom they saw as not one of us not part of the inner circle. Jesus' reaction is perhaps not what they expected because he says, whoever is not against us is for us. And I think it's interesting to note that John didn't say he doesn't follow you, meaning Jesus. He says he doesn't follow us. Jesus never says, come after us, meaning come after me and my disciples. He frequently says, come after me, follow me. The exorcist has been casting out demons in Jesus' name, and he has, in Jesus' eyes, been doing kingdom work. There is a message for us here about the kingdom of God, and that is that it's not exclusive to one denomination, or one church family, or one particular type of person. One writer sort of put it this way, the kingdom of God is an all-inclusive and we will have to give up any thoughts that we are special and exclusive with a right to make judgments about who belongs in our fellowship and who doesn't. 
we have to go to God to forgive our foolish ways when we do. The final sentence of the paragraph end on a positive note, promising that a Christian who serves another Christian, even in the smallest way, will be rewarded. Jesus mentions a cup of water, which is essential to life. We know that. And we're asked to do things for others, things beyond our power. We're not asked to do those. We're asked to do simple things that any of us have. And we will be doing kingdom work. The next paragraph, well, I don't know how you found it, but I find it quite shocking and gruesome. I think if it was a film version, it would be, it would have an 18 certificate and come with the uh, little warning that it has strong language and graphics of a violent nature. But Jesus uses this figurative language, it's exaggerated, to get across the importance of what he's teaching us about the scary reality and the need to avoid those things that turn us away from living as citizens of God's kingdom. I don't think for a minute we're expected to literally cut off a hand or an ear or gouge out our eye or cut off our foot. We're called to take radical action in ourselves to remove the stumbling blocks that keep us apart from God. He uses, Jesus uses that graphic language to stress the importance of resisting temptation. So don't please go home and start cutting off bits of your bodies. And then more than this, Jesus issues his disciples with the dire consequences of causing little ones to stumble. The little ones here, he means, are Christians who may be early in their faith journey or whose faith is delicate. Little in the sense that they are spiritually vulnerable. The message is clear. Citizens of the kingdom work towards the goal of living in the kingdom of God. We're called to try to continually to be obedient to the will of God and to care for the vulnerable. It's, very, it's a very, very challenging passage and a very personal passage. In Google terms, I suppose, we've Googled in to an individual property and that property, of course, is each one of us as children of God. So we need to ask ourselves questions. We can only answer for ourselves here what we need to change in our lives to be more obedient to God's will to retain our saltiness, if you like. And we, have, we can only answer by reflecting honestly on our lives. And if we discover that there is anything that comes between us and perfect obedience to the will of God, we need to be prepared to sacrifice it in order to live a more kingdom central centred life. And of course, we'll never be perfect in this world because we are human, but we can, little by little, become, try, to become more Christ-like and ask for forgiveness when we know we've got it wrong. As personally speaking, I often do. And we can rely on God being with us at each stage of our journey, as we'll see in our next hymn. So some challenging questions to think about. How do we think about people and treat people who are different from us and have different ways of expressing their faith? Do we think we're right and they're wrong? Can we identify aspects of our lives that are stumbling blocks, prevent us from following Jesus and loving God with all our hearts, mind and strength? Some obstacles may be obvious words and behaviour, behaviour contrary to the ways of God's ways of truth and love and forgiveness. But there may be other less obvious things that quietly unsettle our faith and eat into our hearts and minds, taking up space in our lives that could be opened up to God. As I said, we are human, we are broken. We will continue with our lack of obedience to God's will. But all is not lost because of great grace is God's faithfulness to us and his forgiveness of our failings. We have the benefit of knowing the rest of the story. Jesus died on the cross so our sins are forgiven. When we confess our failures to God, our relationship 
is renewed and restored, renewed <coughs> every morning. Written in the letter to St. James, to St. James that we heard, the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise them up and anyone who has committed sins will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. We all have a choice. We can choose to follow our, our own way or God's way, the more valuable way, the way that leads to eternal life. We can choose to admit our stumbling blocks and recount to God our sins and work towards little by little transforming ourselves. And we can choose not to be a stumbling block to those who might wish to express their spirituality, their faith in God in ways that are different from our preferred ways. We can question ourselves and each day just get do one little thing that brings us more closer to the obedience of God that he seeks for us. So let us end in prayer. Holy Spirit, help us to live in the light of the gospel, declaring its truth with our words and to our actions. Help us to be more obedient to your will, choosing the way that leads to eternal life. And help us, Lord, to know our stumbling blocks and little by little to work towards overcoming them and being transformed more and more into the likeness of Jesus. Amen. Amen. ask that you make your church alert to hear the message of salvation and eager to preach it. We especially thank the Lord for this church and for the messages that it is able to broadcast to people. And we think on praying for the couple who were married here yesterday 
and for all their friends. So Ian and Judy. We ask, Lord, that you grant to all Christian people the grace to make a good confession of their faith before the world. And we also ask, Lord, for you to remember those prayers we have made, which are currently on the altar, left from the prayer space. Lord, in your mercy, here I am. In a world where a great gulf separates the rich and the poor, we pray for a new spirit of caring. Speak to the hearts of those about their stumbling blocks. Give to those who have authority in the rich nations the desire to aid the nations that are in need. Lord, in your mercy. We ask that you bless us, our families, friends and neighbours, with a shared concern for our spiritual lives. Open our eyes to see the poor in our community, both in richness and in spirit, and open our hearts to give for their relief. Lord, in your mercy. Have mercy on the destitute who have no shelter and no means of existence. And Lord, help those organisations who help those destitute. Have mercy on the rich, whose love of money has led them into evil ways and led them back to the no- to know, and lead them back to know the true wealth of love for others. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. We pray for the departed who have fought the good fight. Receive them into eternal life with all your saints. And Lord, grant to us to remain the time for repentance and for more faithful lives. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's stand together and sing together. one spirit we were all baptized into one body let us therefore pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life the peace of the lord be always with you and And also also with you let's share god's peace
make yourself known in the breaking of bread. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God for us. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God for us. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Therefore, with our angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing. Let us pray with confidence, a 
as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread.
We praise and thank you, O Christ, for this sacred feast. For here we receive you. Here the memory of your passion is renewed. Here our minds are filled with grace. And here a pledge of future glory is given. For we shall feast at that table where you reign with all your saints forever. Amen. Amen. We pray together. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise for the friend still far off, who met us in your son, and brought us from heaven. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace, and opened the gates of glory. May we who share Christ's risen body live as his risen life. We who drink this cup bring life to us. We who the spirit of us give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope we have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth will live to praise your name. Through Christ, Christ our Lord. Amen. Our final thing for this service is number 507, Lord of all hopefulness.